I'm really excited today to kick off our second series of Python cybersecurity mini project. So this time we'll be covering network scanners and we'll be doing it in five parts. First, we'll build a ping sweeper, which we can provide with a subnet and net mask and which will then output a list of live host IPs. Second, we'll build on that same script to add port scanning as well as multi-threading. Multi-threading will improve performance while port scanning means we now, in addition to a list of live host IPs, will also output all open ports associated with those IPs. Next, we'll start a new script, which is going to receive the output of the previous scripts as input. The service scanner will scan each open IP and port and return a list of services running on them. In our fourth lesson, we add both OS fingerprinting and file output functions to that same script. We can now also potentially identify host operating systems, as well as correctly format and output all our results. Then for our final script, we'll do something awesome. Right now, the scripts we built are working together, but separately, meaning we need to run each individually. So in our fifth script, we'll create a wrapper script, which will essentially unify our previous scripts. This integration process using a wrapper script will be essential in your career using Python for cybersecurity, as it is one of the crucial components of automation. Great, so let's talk more about today's script. Napoleon. Like anyone can even know that. Today we'll build a simple ping sweeper. So a ping sweeper is a very simple but useful tool that we can use in order to find all active hosts on a subnet. In other words, if we give it a subnet and a net mask, essentially meaning a range of IPs on the same subnet, then it will detect which of those IPs are actually live. For example, if we know the subnet is 192.168.20.24, well, then we know there are potentially 254 hosts. But of course, in this situation, we'd like to know which of those 254 hosts are actually active. And that's where Ping Sweeper comes in. And just to prove to you the actual practical worth, we actually used one recently in the CTA for Good Games, where we realized we were trapped in a containerized environment. And so by running a Ping Sweeper, we were able to figure out the IP of the host so that we can ultimately escape the container. Just one thing before we get coding, you can find the script via the link right above at the top of the description. I do recommend downloading it so you can focus on the lesson instead of transcription. So enough with the chit chat, let's get to it. So here is the entire script. Let's quickly get a lay of the land. Right up top, we import all the necessary modules. We then define the primary function, ping sweep. It receives a given network and net mask from the user, and it then performs a ping sweep on each associated IP and ultimately returns a list of live hosts. And then our only other function is a main function where we receive the user's input from command line and pass it to the ping sweep function. Okay, so now that we've looked at the big picture, let's jump in and analyze each line individually. First, we'll import all the required libraries. Sys is used to interact with the command line. The SCAPI modules will be used to create and send the ICMP packets. And NetAdder is used to handle IP address manipulation and calculations. Next, we define the function ping sweep. We can see that it receives the network address and net mask as arguments. We initialize an empty list called live host to store every host that is online. We then create variables total hosts and scanned hosts and set them to zero. These are simply used to keep track of our progress. You'll see that once we run the program, these numbers are displayed at the command line to keep us updated with its real-time progress. Below this, we then create an IP network object, which will determine the actual IPs on the subnet. Of course, remember that though there is a potential range from zero to 255, that is 256 IPs, on a slash 24 network, we discount the network and broadcast addresses, and thus it will contain 254. So now that we've created this object, we can use the dot iter hosts method to return an iterator object, which is going to allow us to loop through all the IPs using a for loop. In this first for loop, we'll simply use it to keep track of the total host we should scan. And then here in the second for loop, we'll once again run through all the IPs and we'll first keep count of each scanned IP and then print a message to screen so the user is aware of the state of progress. And then here is the crucial part. We'll create a variable called response and we'll set it equal to the response we get when we send this argument to the SR1 function. What you need to know here is that SR1 is a scapy function that sends the packet and waits for a single response. And then we can see it receives three arguments, a ICMP echo request packet, as well as a value for timeout and verbosity. And then below that, this if statement simply checks whether a response has some value. And of course, the only time a response will have a value is if the SR1 function returns something, in which case it will be response packet, meaning the host is indeed online. So ultimately, this function will return the list of all the IPs that were found to be online and return it back to our main function here. 
Here we simply declare two variables representing the subnets and the net mask and assign to them the value we received at the command line. Here we then create the live host variable and assign it the value returned by the ping sweep function. In other words, the list of live hosts we just saw above. Finally, before the script ends, it'll let us know it's done and print all the live host IPs to screen. So that's it for the script. Now let's get to the fun bit and test it. I just need your attention for a second. Okay, I don't want to be all melodramatic, but please ensure that you have permission to scan any network you intend to. I'm saying this because you could actually get in legit trouble if you don't, and neither I nor you want that. So either set up a VLAN, or in my case, since I am a happy member of Hack the Box, I'm going to spin up one of their CTF machines, which we'll use to communicate with. And that's all I'll say in the matter. Good. Okay guys, so let's run the script. Here's the command. You can see I'm running sudo, which we'll need to be able to ping, but I'm running sudo e specifically. Specifically. And the reason for that is that sudo e will basically preserve the environmental variables. If you run sudo by itself, it will reset the environmental variables and only run with a minimal amount for security reasons. But we want to ensure that any special libraries that we use in the Python script are preserved. Okay, and so to complete the command, you can see we provided with a target subnet as well as a net mask. Here we'll be scanning 10, 10, 11, 0, slash 24. And we can run our script. We can immediately see that it is executing. All right, this is going to take some time, so I'm going to speed things up. I also just want to let you know not to worry. We will address this inefficiency in the next lesson. And the script is done. Here are the results. We can see that it displayed the live host to terminal as it was scanning. And we can also see that once it is finished, it'll display the results. All right, guys, and that's really all there is to it. We provided the script with a subnet and net mask. In other words, a range of potential hosts. And now it used IC CMP echo request packets to determine which of those hosts are actually live. And that's it. Simple, but also very practical. Something you will 100% use in the field. So in the next video, we'll build on this script by adding port scanning functionality, as well as improve its performance by including multi-threading. It's gonna be awesome. I promise. Until then, peace out.